Are you looking for a resource to discuss all topics air conditioning? Well, you're in the right space. Join the Rawson boys as they discuss the hot topics and the cold hard facts. This is the Air Conditioning Podcast. G'day guys and welcome to another episode of the Air Conditioning Podcast where we discuss all things air conditioning the hot topics. The cold hard facts, Mr. Brad Rawson. Here we are again. Mr. Brad, Brad Rawson, how are you? Not too bad, not too bad today. Good. Nice warm day today. Yeah, it's a bit middle all over the place, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, for early September. Mm. Yeah. We've had um, sunshine and rainbows and then we've had... And then bloody... it's going to be nasty tomorrow. Yeah. Very Thunderstorms nice. and 21 and... Doesn't know what it's doing. No. There's a big uh, front... It's all over circling. the place. Yeah. Yes, and how's your week been so far? Oh, yeah, not too bad. Pretty busy, actually, which is good. That's good. And yours? Mm-hmm. Been a bit the same, really. Yeah. A few, few more quotes. It's sort of ramped up over the last yeah, two weeks, so... Yeah. Which is I don't good. know why that is, but... It I don't know, it's up, that's a bit like the weather at the moment. Yeah. It's up and down like a... Doesn't know what it's doing. I won't, I won't say what, what I was, was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And the footy, uh, the Crows have had three. Three in a row. Can you believe Going it? for the fourth, the last game. Last Richmond game. Crows. Richmond. What, what do you reckon the odds are? I don't know. It's going to be a tough one, but uh, we'll see how we go. Oh, look, you just, <laughs> you wish them luck, but... Yeah, I won't be holding my breath. Sadly, no. well, if they win it, they won't get the wooden spoon. Yeah, yeah, so that's good. No one likes a wooden spoon. No, though. exactly right. I remember that as a kid. Yes, and yeah. our visitor doesn't like a wooden spoon either. No. <laughs> and we we are lucky. Speaking of our guest, Brad, we are lucky uh, to have someone sitting in front of us today, which is highly unusual. We yeah, normally that's uh, right. Normally via the old Zoom thing, so. Uh, um, guys, we've got a, a person in today who is, um, uh, well, he's got a background with uh, uh, Dakin as a service tech brand. Yep. And he's uh, ventured out on his own and uh, started his own business called Walker Air. And uh, with that, I'd like to welcome Shane Walker. Hello, mate. Hey, how you going? Welcome, mate. Welcome to the podcast. Glad, glad to be here. <laughs> and it's a Friday afternoon, yeah. so we're having a beer. Have yeah. a beer, which I is hope, hope you don't mind. Nah, man, I'm completely open to it. You're twist right with my, that? Twist my arm. <laughs> happy to have a beer or two. That's exactly. it. That's what it's about. Um, so listen, um, for those that aren't familiar with Walker Air, mate, can you start off by telling us a bit about your business and how it all sort of came about? Well, uh, that's interesting. So basically, um, yeah, I was a service tech for Dakin for quite a few years and... Um, yeah, doing predominantly service, a bit of installation, um, but the way sort of how Dakin operated, um, they had us set up as essentially you're running yourself, so you're basically quoting jobs, invoicing jobs, um, doing partially commissioning installation, um, so basically doing a great deal of what I'm doing now, um, except you're sort of doing it within the company. So a lot of it wasn't really much of a transition for me personally, going to from Dakin um, you know, because we already did a lot of these things anyway. Yeah. Um, my service software is a little bit different to what they use and um, what I use is a little bit different. Yeah. Um, and a few other bits and pieces, but I was lucky enough to get acquire the skill set there to be able to do um, a lot of the stuff that's required to run your own business. So, yeah, yeah, right. um, yeah we did a lot of things at Dakin. We saw a lot of things, and obviously you do get a lot of experience and exposure um, and you do learn a great deal. So yeah, I was very grateful to learn and gain a lot of experience and knowledge from there. Mm. Um, and yeah, it made it quite a seamless transition. Um, and yeah, it's funny how much Dakin and stuff's out there because we're constantly, yeah. seems to just find us continuously. So. That's right. Did you start with Dakin? Uh, no, uh, initially, my apprenticeship. Yeah. No, well, I started my apprenticeship in 2008, from memory. Um, and I started with a company called Hasty Services, which was a service oh. company. Um, no, at that point in time, they were the biggest yeah. company. It was actually, a, I actually started under Concept, um, which is a, an Adelaide-based company that got bought out by Hasty. Oh, Hasty yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and then I basically became Hasty. And yeah, we're doing servicing, and the scope of works that we did there was quite large. Um, we were doing Woolworths, DX plant systems, big W's, Telstra's, Telstra exchanges going out to the middle of nowhere, changing units over. So we did a lot of cool and saw a lot of cool things, a lot mm. of cool work. Mm. Um, and that was a good experience as well in itself. Um, but 
being young and an apprentice, my mind was probably not where it needed to be for quite a long time. So where was it, Shane? Uh, <laughs> I think everywhere, everywhere except for work. I guess yeah, right. uh, you know, as a kid, you know, you leave school and then you go out into the real world and you're like, you don't want, you know, yeah. just seeing how this is bullcrap. You don't want to, you don't want to work. Right. And exactly. You just want to do nothing all the yeah. time. That so. just gets you through the weekend, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. the typical young teenager and. I had no interest, but as you get older, yeah, I was just got to a point. I was sort of at the point. Well, you know, I, I don't want to be one of those guys that is, you know, poor at his job or you know, you know, doesn't know what he's doing. And yeah, sort of just click, clicked into gear as I got older. And then I went to uh, another service company called Williams Refrigeration Air Conditioning. So they're oh. they're based out out north, yeah. northeast, uh, yeah. and they do predominantly uh, spotless work, which is government work across. Across SA, probably on the northeastern side of the city, so yeah. all your schools, uh, police stations, stuff like that, uh, defence sites as well. We had the defence contracts, so saw a lot of cool things there yeah. too. Uh, and that was predominantly service with um, installation as well, here and there, yep. and um, a lot of uh, maintenance. Which yeah, we we all love maintenance. Being uh, being an active young guy, eventually I needed to move on, and that's when I uh, basically. Uh, forced my way into Dakin so yeah. Um, yeah just kept ringing the service manager and harassing him until he gave me an opportunity to work there um, and then eventually enough yeah I've got the gig over there and yeah learnt, learnt a lot so it was a good yeah. good way back yeah, yeah cool. never thought I'd be working for myself um, if you asked me this a couple of years ago um, it was never even a thought um, but yeah things happened the way they did and here we are. And, you. and when it came to, you know, your hasty days moving to then, um, what do we say, Dakin after that? Was it Dakin? No. Oh, Williams, Williams, yeah. Williams. Yeah. Yeah. What was the What was the transition like there? Like, what was the thought behind that? Was it just to try something different? You were young and looking for more? Well, I actually, as I said, I was a lot younger and, and I actually didn't have much of an interest for air conditioning. I didn't really have, I didn't have an interest for working at that stage. I was a young, <laughs> young, silly kid who just wanted to go out and have fun with his friends and play football and stuff like that. So I actually, uh, I actually ended up leaving Hasties, um, and I had a bit of time away from the trades. So I had about six months away where I wasn't working in air conditioning. Um, and I was actually just working with some friends doing, uh, basically building and construction and labouring and stuff like that. Yep. And then I realised that uh, air conditioning is a lot better. <laughs> and yeah, got lucky enough to get given an opportunity at Williams. Um, and then I went and worked there and um, where Hasty was a very corporate company. Um, and there was a, it was a different world uh, mm -hmm. going across to Williams where it was like a family run business. So yeah. they were really, they were really, really good to work for. They were really nice people. The bosses were really good and understanding and, was a very carefree, good working environment, and it still is to this day. They highly retain their staff because yep. it's such a nice, comfortable place to work. Good culture. Yeah, good culture. Yep. Um, very nice culture, and they're probably a little bit too nice to their their employees. They should probably be a little bit harder on them. But that being said, that's how they retain their staff. Yeah, and exactly. A good family business like that is always, uh, you know, it's always going to be good to work for. So yeah, I did enjoy my time there, but. It got to the point where I started getting a hunger to improve my my knowledge and my skill set, and that's where I saw Dakin and just and went for, for it. Well, yeah, you want to do a bit more service type stuff, yeah. rather than maintenance. Yeah, I just wanted to continue to progress my yeah. skill set and learn more and uh, gain more. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, that's how that ended up. So yeah, cool. And you're based in Adelaide, aren't you? Yes. Yes, you've always been here. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So we we cover. We pretty much go anywhere. I say we, we uh, you know, the, we pretty much just cover all of Adelaide generally. Um, we're based in the northeast um, of Adelaide, um, yeah. but that being said, we are uh, everywhere yeah. all the time. Yeah. So, <laughs> do you do much country work? Uh, it depends on what, what's required, um, and we will if, it's, if it is required, um, and it obviously depends on the volume. Um, yeah. But yeah, I've, I've done a lot of long travel for probably jobs to spend more time traveling for. Yeah. Um, but sometimes, you know, for us anyway, we look at the bigger picture um, and it's more so about, um, yeah, the bigger picture with things. You yeah. know, we like to try and do the best we can by our customers and do everything we can. Um, and it's not always about, you know, you might be there for five minutes. It's more yeah. about the bigger picture and what we can do for them. And that opens up, not only, you know, is that good for them and we're doing a good service by them, but, you know, 
things work out, have a good funny way of working themselves out, mm. and you know that can turn into a small job might turn into all of a sudden you're maintaining you know a whole sort of city commercial site yeah. because of you done one small thing. So yeah. we just try and look at it like that. It's always a uh, about the bigger picture. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and it's funny how things kind of find you when you're doing stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, you know, so you know, you go. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just going to ask Shane um, when you were with those bigger companies that you've worked for in the past. Are they are they more well, are they wages based or are they incentivized? How do they how do they generally operate? Well, my understanding of. Uh, the first initial company I started at, that was the biggest service company I've ever worked for and been a part of and I was a very small increment in that company yeah. um, probably a, and the, probably yeah, the, at the very bottom, um, no skill set, no experience um, and yeah, I was very fresh and green and my attitude was poor so um, that being said anyway, um, yeah look that, that was place was so big that we had a city team, a north team and a south team and I only saw people in the north team we had our own service meetings, um, and yeah, you would see, you would only see guys once a year, and you didn't even know they worked there. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I, I can't really speak too much on their wages and their incentives and stuff like that. I don't really have much of an idea, but I know for an apprentice, I got paid quite well, mm-hmm. um, and everyone at trade school was frustrated because we us hasty apprentices got paid quite well. So yeah. did the um, is it the old uh, cliche of getting a lot of shit as a uh, an apprentice? Uh, yeah, well, back when I started, definitely. I think now, the way things are going now and uh, kids these days definitely don't take criticism as well as what they used to. Um, I feel like probably the era that I started was pretty much getting towards the end of it where the old, you know, the apprentice just got treated like crap. Mm, that yeah. was like a real old school cliche where the old guys would just be really you know hard on the apprentices. Yeah. If now, as if now, if you're hard on an apprentice, they won't come in or they'll quit. Yeah. So, um, or you're yeah. Lawsuit. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I've, I've, I came in, you know, like um, probably to the back end of that, and where I used to, yeah, have a lot of older, older tradesmen call me all sorts of names and give me a lot of, you know, give me a lot of crap here and there. But, um, uh, yeah, I came in the back end of that, and then I've obviously transitioned into being a tradesman myself. And I'm obviously, I remember what it was like when I got copped it from tradesmen. Yeah all the time um, so I'm always pretty pretty lenient to apprentices but that's being said I always have a joke with them um, but I also know as well the newer generation don't take criticism quite that well <laughs> so especially depending on who it is you really got to make sure you approach them based on their personality because yeah. you know uh, I suppose if you're like you know you refer to it as sport some people you can yell at them and you'll get a response some people they'll go cry and you won't hear from them yeah. so it's, it's really yeah, exactly. Yeah. But definitely, the newer generation is a bit more sensitive to criticism. Yeah. Um, and yeah, back in the day, obviously, they. I don't know. Back in the day, things were a lot harder. Um, I remember everything was hand tool based. We're getting towards oh, yeah. the back end of that when I started. Everyone had their hand tools, undoing units. Now you've got a twelve volt impact driver, and you yeah. just everything's yeah. out. Yeah, you know. Well. So, yeah, things have changed quite a bit. Yeah, exactly. Oh, beautiful. And, and talk to us about um, your time at, uh, at Dakin in more recent times. Um, you, as a service tech, you would have seen some, some common issues that would pop up from time to time. What, uh, what can you share with our audience that would be something that you saw frequently that you perhaps might, that they might see out there that you could perhaps help them with? Yeah, give, so, give them a little gold nugget. A gold <laughs> well, there's lots of gold nuggets I suppose the first thing it depends on the type of equipment you're working with so and it depends where you're based uh, in yeah. you know based in the world basically mm-hmm. it depends where you are it's going to depend on what type of equipment you have mm-hmm. um, predominantly in Australia most of the equipment we have especially in Adelaide we have the sky air ducted systems split ducted systems um, whole split systems ceiling cassettes and VRVs and um, we also have they can do um, some chillers as well which were McQuay chillers originally but now they're branded Dakin chillers and they yeah. do magnetic bearing chillers but I didn't do much at the central plant it was more so sky air and commercial yeah. so VRV uh, VRV two pipe heat, uh, heat pumps and three pipe heat recovery units yeah. but um, I guess my, my advice with Dakin stuff is most people um, would look at it uh, and they just kind of they when they look at it they just they just oh 
just so much controls. Yeah. There's so many because they do have a lot of controls yeah, and functions sure. and safeties and um, the way they operate. There's a lot of a lot of things happening and yeah. people can just look at that and get kind of bamboozled by yeah. what's in front of them. Overwhelmed. Yeah, overwhelmed exactly. Yeah. And yeah. my advice would be is this. Never ever generally anything overly complicated. Yeah. Don't overcomplicate it, um, and don't get lost in all of, in everything that's in front of you. Yeah. Um, but I suppose generally the most common faults we see across your Skyer products, we generally obviously see a lot of motor fusions, fan motor failures. But that's common across most brands. Mm-hmm. Um, and motor fusions on Dakin units have uh, can have the impact of damaging the main inverter board. So I guess on our Skyer products, we see it. Quite often, you get the L1 error, which indicates a uh, inverter PCB failure. Yep. But what an actual fact is happened is the condenser fan motors fused to ground, yep. and that's shorted out the inverter board. So Cut if you just change the inverter yeah. board, you'll be back there with another L1. Yeah. And the inverter boards are obviously the main control for the compressor, um, fan motors, and everything like that. So they're quite expensive. So you don't want to make that mistake. So definitely important to carry out the correct motor testing procedures yeah. um, which Dakin are really good they have apps they have the Dakin equip app and they also have Dakin service which is a UK app um, they both have a lot of information it's just knowing where yeah. to look and where to find mm-hmm. them so in that situation would you just would you just change out one fan motor or would you do both um, well based on my experience and I would always advise and I'll uh, it sounds rich when you explain this to customers, especially in domestic application, because yeah. obviously it's a lot more personal because money is a money is a, it's their money. Yeah. Um, but I always say to customers, and I've seen it. It hasn't happened to me directly, but we had a technician replace one fan motor and the inverter board. Yeah. And then six months later, yeah, the top fan motor fused. Yeah. And then it's another inverter board and yeah. another fan motor. That's tricky. So so I always advise to replace both fan motors. Um, as a precautionary repair, yeah. um, you know, you might spend an extra couple hundred bucks doing that, yeah. but you might save a thousand plus. Yeah, exactly right. Um, yeah. And, and looking like an idiot. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and the problem is as well, obviously with the background, we do get a lot of calls from technicians who yeah. just want the quick fix yeah. and the quick answer. Um, but it's probably very important to understand how it all works. And as I said, they can have, have really good in having access to... Um, all their information mm-hmm. so um, use the applications use the uh, use this use the software to obtain the information you need and read it and understand it first because mm. um yeah you need to understand why something's happened um, mm-hmm. and how to test it because it's obviously easy for me because I have the experience and I've seen a lot of these things before so I can probably cut corners yeah. because I know where to look mm-hmm. um, but you need to start, you need to crawl before you can walk yeah. and you need to do things the right way before you can sort of yeah. bypass certain things. Like I generally a lot of the time I don't test motors, I actually look on the base of them yeah. um, because there's green ink when they fuse mm-hmm. um, on the bottom of the fan motors, on the skyers and even on the split systems. When the motor fuses, quite often you'll see a, a green ink on yeah, the base. I've seen that, yeah. And that's oh, right where the cables come yep. out of the motor. Yeah. And sometimes the motor actually, the cables blow out of it. Yep. Um, and that is every single day yeah. of the week in motor fusion and, and why is that is that just is it the the bearings in the motor get tight or um look to be perfectly honest i couldn't say whether it's the actual windings of the motor or the bearings themselves um it is fairly common but it also is common across other brands i've seen motor yeah. fusion is pretty common across fujitsu as well yeah um and it's just one to be really careful careful with because a fan motor failure can can lead to other problems. Um, yeah. And that's probably the most one that catches people out. They go, oh, I've got an E7, which is a fan motor failure. They replace the fan motor, oh, I've still got an E7. Yeah. And it's actually damaged the fan motor output on the board too. Yeah. So it's important. Um, and and, and it's sometimes there's no way to avoid getting caught no. out. Yeah. You might have an E7 and you go, oh, it's just the fan motor. Yeah. But um, it's the board as well. Sometimes I, I think it's, in those cases for the for the tech and the end user i reckon it's uh, killing two birds with one stone is mm. the safer way to go definitely is um bite the bullet from the word go yeah yeah get it done do what you have to do put the customers out gonna have a bit of pain involved as far as financial right, so. but at the end of the day 
you're not going to be coming back and looking yep. like an idiot. And That's right. Because then it looks like you didn't know what you're doing in the first place. Correct. That's right. Yeah. It, is, it is also a fine line with that, I guess, because, you know, and because, you know, and in so many instances, we've gone to jobs where other technicians have been and they've just changed everything. Yeah. Because um, they haven't, they've just had it going, you know what? We don't know what's wrong with it. Let's just throw everything at it. Yeah. Um, and that's a fine line too, because obviously you can go, all right, they didn't need this. They didn't need this. This, this client, the customers paid, you know, spent an extra fifteen hundred dollars. They didn't need to spend. So it is important. Um, it is a fine line. I um, mean, it just depends on the instance and what mm. type of unit it is and what type of issue we have. I'll probably say to the client, look, it could just be your fan motor, for example. Um, but I said, look, it could be the board output could be damaged. We have no way of testing. Say, for example. It's a single uh, single fan condensing unit. If it's a two-speed, uh, two fan condensing unit, you can actually mm. swap the outputs, and then you'll know if it's a damaged output or just the fan only, because yeah, mm-hmm. only one f- the other fan will run. Um, so that's a good way to determine whether it's an output issue or just the motor. Is just swap the fan motors around, yeah. uh, and then you can test the output because the fan will actually spin. Yeah. Um, but in instances where you don't have that sort of uh, uh, option, um, you know, you could say to the customer, look. It could be your fan motor, which is, let's say, for example, two hundred dollars. I said we can replace that, and we're going to run with that. But it could also be the inverter board, but that's thirteen hundred dollars. I'm not going to ch- order that and then charge you for it if we don't need it. Yeah. So then, then you're kind of looking after them even with the second visit. So mm-hmm. it's definitely a fine line between yeah. Yeah. going, all right, yeah. let's just spend fifteen hundred bucks, or that's you fine. can save them that time. So it's just yeah. a fine line too. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. yeah, would you agree that, um, I mean, you're obviously very comfortable with Dakin equipment. Uh, is there any other equipment out there that you haven't sort of worked with? No, not really. So I would I would say, um, and I do find this quite often, um, because Dakin's uh, controls and how they operate is quite intricate, everything else is quite simple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can have a lot of controls uh, and uh, the way they operate and how they do things. Um, there can be so there's just so many factors involved, yeah, yeah. Um, and fault codes are applicable. Um, on what are, what's applicable for a fault code on some models, um, you actually have to read the service manual because yeah, yeah maybe a specific fault code and it, it says okay the inverter board's failed, but then yeah. it can also if you look at it in, in the manual for that model, it can also mean several other things. Yeah, yeah. So the fault codes can vary, so that's yeah. why it's really good to refer to the manual. Yeah, if you have, sure. the, have the Dakin Equip app, that's really handy to yeah. have. Would you, would you say then that um, if <coughs> Dakin Equipment is more intricate than perhaps some other models, would you say that, that it's uh, more preferable to have a, someone who's specialised, a bit like yourself working on it, than someone that perhaps hasn't had that experience before? Yeah, absolutely. And mm. I definitely don't want to ever, you know, put down people because the only reason I'm, I have the knowledge is from experience and I've worked on them for years and I've made mistakes and that's how I've learned. So um, it's easy for me to sit here and, you know, be on my high horse because I worked for Dakin and I had the experience and the exposure and that's all it is. Um, yeah, exactly. And the willingness to, you know, figure things out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the amount of times we do go to jobs and technicians have, you know, made a mess um, and it's cost the client lots of money mm-hmm. um, because they haven't really known what what they're doing with the product. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, it's a shame because it's the customer that pays and yeah, especially sure. if, you know, especially if the customer is kind of, you know, unaware, um, they can get taken for quite a ride. So that's yeah, the, yeah. the biggest problem. And yeah, we all the time we see mistakes made by technicians who don't have the experience and they just have a stab, replace all the parts. Mm-hmm. And it's something so simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. That may not even cost them anything. Sure. And also on the customer side, I think it's important that um, all the techs out there who are dealing with this sort of stuff and and are trained and, and, and they know what they're doing, they shouldn't be afraid to be charging the customer the correct amount of money uh, for your experience and your knowledge. Right. Correct. Yeah, that's we right. We shouldn't be thinking that we should be doing everything for nothing all the time. We've got to stop this race to the bottom. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Well, they're that's all, that's all trying to cut prices and do it the cheapest. But yeah, that's if, right. If, you, if you're experienced and you know what you're looking for, yeah. it shouldn't take you as long as the guy that doesn't know what he's looking for. That's right. Who's, who's out there charging less? Correct. Yeah, it's actually funny you mention that because I'm in a uh, so someone through my sports community invited me into like a Facebook group and it's like a tradies 
group yeah. yes. and people just ask for tradies and they get recommendations and stuff. He invited me in there, so and I don't have anything to do with it other than I like looking at the comments Yeah. because um, people, oh, can anyone get an air conditioning go out? This is my issue. And then all these um, aircon guys jump on it and everyone's giving their opinion. And yeah, everyone's you know, an expert. Yeah, everyone's an expert. And you know what it's like. It's like the classic you know, power tools. Oh, the Dewalt's better. Oh, Makita's better. Yeah. Milwaukee's better. You know, you can go on for days. But, you know, everyone gives their opinion on it. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and some people were doing things for nothing. Um, and with us, look, we're definitely not the cheapest, for sure. Definitely yeah. not. We're probably a median, medium price range to have us out to do your work. But at the end of the day, especially with the Dakin product is yeah okay we might be might be more money to for us to come out but we also have a diagnosis exactly. immediately and mm-hmm. a response and parts ordered mm-hmm. we know exactly what's That's going right. on so you might have a technician spend two days at your house we might spend an hour Correct. so it's very important yeah. and unfortunately the customer's never going to know that um, and it literally is just a roll of the dice who you get yeah, and where yeah, they come yeah. from um, and we've had I've had the simplest simple things I've had instances where people have looked at look at air, looked at Dakin air conditioners and they've plugged in a DC polarity polarity sensitive uh, capacitor the yeah. wrong way and it's been they haven't been able to work it out yeah. for two weeks yeah, yeah, we've right. been there for two minutes yeah, so that's right and that as, as I said that's just our experience in working with the product it's yeah. not like we're any better it's just we've been doing it for so long we yeah. know what to look for um, and yeah, the amount of calls we have from text, you know, oh, I've checked this, I've checked this. No, nah, it's all spot on. And then you go out there and they plug something in the wrong place. Um, seen it many, many times. Yeah. Um, but it's just experience at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. All the techs out there, they should be like trying to do as much of the you know, manufacturer training as they can, I suppose, if, they, if they've got the opportunity. Mm. Yeah, definitely is. Um, I, I guess as well, though, the most valuable thing, in my opinion, is experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely experience. Uh, and unfortunately, um, unless you're working on that product continuously, you're never going to have that luxury of experience yeah. to be a specialist with a product, I guess. Because, um, yeah. yeah, that's where us technicians, when we work at Dakin, there's a good group of us and we all bounce off each other. Yeah, exactly. We all bounce ideas, theories, ideas, problems. We all learn off each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we all grew together. Yeah. And it was literally experience, um, just based on experience. So I made plenty of mistakes, plenty of silly mistakes. And you, yeah, simple things that you just oversee. Yeah. Um, but that's how you learn. And everyone does, yeah. Yeah. And that's how I've learned. Yeah. I'm not technically trained, but I've I've you you know, learn by grown up in a business yeah. uh, around yeah, that's right. and, and yeah. yourself, and that's how I picked up what I know. So exactly right. Still don't know anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. We're all we're all learning. Me neither. Now, um, Shane, you mentioned the E7 and you've mentioned the L1. I want to put you on the spot now. All right. We'll start off with an easy one. Give us a U4. Uh, got a transmission error between indoor and outdoor and that's an outdoor transmission error generally good yeah. what's, a, what's the uh, part number for those parts that we need for that <laughs> for what an L1 <laughs> yeah. 401584 and 401252 and what size unit do you want we need a capacity adapter for yeah. that yeah <laughs> depends on what, what size what's, what capacity adapter you that's need that's it yeah alright nice what about a um, we say a U7 no we said yeah, U7 is yeah. not a common fault <laughs> Not a common fault? No. Nah. Okay. Get U1s, phase reversal errors. U1, yes. Yeah. U7s UO's. used to be on the older yeah. 60s and stuff like that. Yeah, you get UOs. Um, we'll start to see a lot now coming to summer. Uh, J2s on RYs with soft starters and yeah. run capacitors. Yeah. Very common. What about a UF? UF, that's a capacity... That's, I've only seen... Capacity seen setting. One of those. Is yeah. there that capacity setting issue? This is why I refer... Even I refer to the Equip app because yeah. Yeah. my memory is as short as a goldfish's and uh, <laughs> even though I've worked on them for years as I said a fault code the fault code will say one thing yeah. say for example yeah. there's a fault code the there's a fault code in there that states there's a faulty uh, BP junction box which is a branch box for a VRV3 <laughs> heat re- or VRV heat recovery sorry yeah okay so that states there's an issue with the branch box I've had that fault on other systems where it's not even a VRV there's no branch yeah. box but then you actually pull out the manual and it will actually tell you what it is and mm-hmm. it's actually, if you, there's more detail to it. So yeah, okay. that's why it's important. And it's the simplest thing. It's just knowing where to look. Yeah. If you get the Equip app or even if you have UK, the UK, Dakin UK app, which is the service app, you can literally get the information. But if you're in Australia, you get the UK app, um, the UK app, sorry, the Equip app and I think they just require your 
um, Arctic license yeah. number and they'll approve it and yeah. then you literally have access to their document library and they're free and it's free yeah and you can literally punch in a model number in the fault area and it will bring up the manual for that unit and the faults for that unit and you can just scroll through and you can follow follow all the information mm. and test it properly and that's people ring tech support that's that's what tech support are doing yeah. so you can yeah. bypass that and not wait in the queue for several hours and get called back several hours later yeah. and just figure it out yourself yeah um yeah that'd be my because at the end of the day tech support can only do so much as well because they're not physically there on site yeah they can't see that yeah they can't see that you've got a reverse phase and you have yeah you know, they can't right. see that yeah. they can't see any of this information so yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. Right. So can you um, can you tell us any more about um, some of the more common fault codes that have um, that you've come across and you come across every day of the week? Yeah, definitely. So the most common fault codes, obviously, we discussed the L one. That's very common across uh, the Sky Air inducted range. Um, you'll see that on systems that were produced from anywhere from probably two thousand and nine to two thousand eleven. Um, the 410 units, they are K-series, so you'll see the model an RQ100 or a 125 or a you know, 16 or anything like that, and it ends in KV4A. That's a very common um, fault uh, to, to, to actually get, and yeah, it'll be a state that's an inverted PCB failure, but in actual fact, it will be a motor fusion, so you need to confirm that and carry out the correct testing procedures. So um, other than that, so the other one would be uh, an L5 error. Uh, on top discharge units, so units above 16 kilowatts, uh, Dakin will produce a top discharge unit. And when I say top discharge, I mean by condenser air is being discharged from the top instead of horizontally. Um, these units uh, in, this, in the domestic market, they're more of a commercial unit, but you know, 18 kilowatt, 20 kilowatt, 25 kilowatt, you'll see twin discharge fans. Um, they will, uh, they basically look and a very similar to a VRV3 uh, heat recovery and heat pump. The inverter board is identical, same inverter board. Um, the control board part numbers are different. I don't know if the software's any different, but it's, I, I'm not too sure. Some of those new control boards have got like, um, you gotta get wiring looms with them, don't you? Yep, yep, so with the L5, yeah. so the L5 error, so I'm getting off track, the L5 yeah. error is a very common fault and top discharge units, an L5 error basically states that a compressor is mechanically seized. Um, but you gotta be very careful with that. Um, what has actually generally happened, um, once in, and I've probably done hundreds of L5s, um, once I've had a compressor that's actually been seized, um, which obviously there's not really any way to test a mechanical mm. seized compressor as um, long as you're carrying out insulation testing and everything like that. The L5 error actually states the compressor is mechanically seized, but what it actually is, is it's the inverter board. Um, and the inverter board is not giving a signal output to the compressor and then it, all it detects is that the compressor is actually seized. Yeah. So that's a very common one. I would be concerned as to know about the amount of compressors that have been changed mm. across Australia with yeah. uh, L5 errors where it's just been an inverter board and as you said before Brad I guess the new inverter boards come uh, they well they don't come it's an optional you have to order the parts as well they're separate part numbers but they come with wiring looms because they can have altered the altered the layout of the inverter PC board so that the PC board um, Initially, it had plugs for, so basically had a three, your three phases coming out of your filter PCB went into your inverter board. They were, it's like a three pin plug. They are now individualized female crimps mm -hmm. um, and you get an adapter assembly to plug into the filter board, which plugs into the inverter board and same for the compressor and the positioning of a couple of interconnecting cables between fan driver boards and control boards mm -hmm. are now have to be longer yeah. So you could extend all these with crimps and cables, yeah. but it's not going to look pretty. So mm -hmm. you need the uh, inverter accessory yeah. accessories. But that fault in particular is a very big one, especially because it's, as I said, L, uh, these units are identical to a VRV3. Yeah. So VRV3, if you have an L5 and a VRV3, obviously carry out your correct testing and in insulation testing to the compressor motor. Um, but my first initial, if that was me, I would just be hitting it with the board change the board uh, yeah. and that will get you out of trouble because if you're going to change, so let's say it's a VRV3 system and it's a heat, you know, it's a VRV system, oh, yeah. it does a multi-story building Huge. and it's got 80 kilos of gas yeah, in it, yeah. 
You're going to do eighty kilos of gas yeah. and a compressor for as yeah for a board for a board. Oh, yeah. So yeah. that's a very very important one. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. There was a um, another uh, fault that I've come across a couple of times. I reckon um, from memory, my memory's not very good, but it's um, it's got to do with and it's with again with the VRV condenser top discharge thing. Um, the fan drivers. Have you come across that? Is it a U something fault or? We can get UE faults, U, 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 which is a UE fault is a communication error between uh, main main PCB and uh, inverter PCB. Yeah. And what that actually is is yeah, it's just basically stating that there's a communication break between yeah the main control PC board and yeah. the inverter PCB. And the good thing about the Dakin units, so this is top discharge. The units are now changing. They're going to more of a VRV4 layout, even on top discharge, yeah. but we're talking about VRV3 and top discharge units around that same year. So the models that go with RY, uh, I mean, sorry, RY, RQ200, KY ones, stuff like that, You will, um, that's where you're gonna see what we're talking about. Um, but yeah, they all have happy lights on the PCBs and they're really easy to see. Um, yeah. So the inverter board, when it's not operating, will be asleep, but they have happy lights on them. Um, if the fan driver board has a happy light on it, and you can insulation test the fan motor to make sure that's okay. But yeah, same thing with the fan driver board. The layouts are different, um, and you need wiring accessories yeah. for those two. But yeah. I suppose the other fault that will really get people out, seeing as I'm just running you guys off time, you're never gonna get home. That's right. The most common fault is a, well, a very common fault, which is very hard to pick up on the Sky range as a, uh, the K the KV4As again um, the ones that produce L1s the second most common fault on that system is a U4 transmission error um, where in the instance where it actually won't display a U4 transmission error on the controller um, mm -hmm. it will actually display it in the outdoor PCB um, so on the outdoor PCB of a KV4A which is the same basically PCB layout as an LB1 which is like the last of the 410 ducted series they have like a they have a binary of lights, which is like labeled H1P to H7P, yeah. exactly like a VRV3. Yeah. And you can actually go through the fault history at the outdoor and you can see its most recent retry fault. And it's right. just a sequence of lights. And that's how you actually check um, that it's had a U4 error. And what the U4 error is actually caused by is there's a transmission PC board on the outdoor unit. It's called mm -hmm. A3P. And what actually happens is it intermittently cuts the unit out yeah, right. and the way I found this initially um, was through making mistakes change the inverter board change the fans like a like a classic Dakin repair didn't fix it um, I actually put the laptop on it and I could see the unit was stopping starting stopping starting throughout the day so when it was high ambience yeah. it wasn't sustaining temperature because of the cutouts right. and it was and I'm like well the thermostat's saying it's on yeah, but it right. keeps cutting out um, yeah and eventually looked through the service manual found out how to do outdoor error history testing mm -hmm. and found that yeah the fault wasn't ever being stored at the controller it would never show up because it has to have yep. a certain amount of retries but it was actually displaying it in the outdoor board and sneaky little bit. yep and i've had faults like that where people say oh it just doesn't seem to work that well and this board's 130 bucks yeah and so in some instances it would intermittently stop so there'd be hundreds all over the place in australia that would be doing this and people yeah. don't even know um, but then sometimes they fail completely and the outdoor would just sit there and do nothing so that's that's a really hard one to pick up. There's but a gold it, nugget right there. There's yes. a gold nugget. Gold but, nugget. But again, that's in the manual. You can yeah. find it. Yeah. So that is the gold nugget for yeah. sure. That's a hard yeah. one to pick up. So. Now, Especially being intermittent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Make you look like an idiot. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> and um, just going back now to um, uh, your transition away from Dakin to starting out your own business. Talk us through that mindset, how that all sort of came about. Was it just one day you sort of woke up and went, you know what, time to do my own business? Or Yeah, it? actually it was very similar to that. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was not expecting it. Um, actually, it came to a point I was running a job um, where we were doing a VRV, commercial VRV upgrade. I think it was about 60, 60 odd fan coils on a heat pump to a two-pipe system. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, we're doing an upgrade on that. So it was VRV4 up to upgrade to VRV4 from a two. Um, and yeah, that was quite a big job, um, but it actually, yeah, it was so big that by the end of it, I, you know, I, obviously we'd organized the job, me and another, uh, my supervisor at the time, we organized everything. 
Um, he quoted it up and then I went to site and did all the works um, alongside him as well and another contractor we did all the works and then I commissioned it and then I invoiced it so and by the end of that I was pretty worn out and I was just thinking about things and timing probably wasn't the best not for my wife anyway because she was pregnant at the time mm-hmm. um, but yeah that's kind of just I just yeah literally woke up and thought you know what like if I'm not going to do it now, I've always talked about it and I've always said, oh, you know, I want to wait till I'm a little bit more grounded because, you know, I want to commit 100%, um, you know, and you're waiting for the right time as that old saying that, you know, there isn't a right time, you just go for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, my wife was pregnant. So when I told her that I was going to quit my good, well-paying, comfortable job and start my own business, she was uh, mortified. Um but now she says one of the best things I've ever done. So it really worked out. So she she works for you. She does. Uh, yeah, she, work side yeah she does all the ser- all the she does all the service coordinating. So yeah. which is really good. Um, it saves me. I, I did it for six to eight months. Um, but I couldn't provide, well, especially when we're busy. I couldn't provide the quality of service that we want to provide, where we're ringing customers on the day during the day. Because the problem is, if you're getting twenty phone calls in a day. Um, how are you getting any work done? So yeah. generally what would happen is I wouldn't answer a lot of them and then I'd be going home. And sometimes, in the, especially in the summer, it was 8.30, 9 o'clock at night and I'm ringing people and saying, I'm so sorry that, you know, I'm so sorry to call you so late. And that yeah. that wasn't professional um, for us and we didn't want to be like that. Um, and luckily enough, yeah, my wife was on maternity leave so she started doing it and now she's just a natural with it. She's natural with computers. So yeah, right. um, she was a typist, types medical reports. Um, so she's just... Fast. Lightning yeah, right. fast, yeah. yeah cool. So and she's really friendly and bubbly on the phone. Yeah. So clients love it, and uh, it's a big weight off my shoulders. Mm. But you've got to start somewhere, don't you? Yeah, that's right. So, you do. Do you, do you use a CRM, like a service program? Or yeah, I do. I use uh, Service Mate, which is the same yeah. software we all use together. Yes. Um, yeah, that's right. You guys use soft Service Mate as well, which yeah. is a great, a great, uh, a great system, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially if you're doing a high turnover of jobs, I'd say if you're if you're someone who's doing you know larger jobs and you're doing maybe one job every two weeks, yeah. probably not not going to be utilised. But if you're someone that you know, especially when we're on service, we might do anywhere between six, nine service calls a day. Sometimes we've gotten into tens and plus and plus. Yeah. So um, that's a lot of coordinating. That's yeah. a lot of jobs. That's a lot of parts. That's a lot of information, photos, mm-hmm. and yeah. service mate that's captures right. all that. Yeah. And it does, puts it together really nicely, and it looks very professional. Um, as if, you know, even when you when you navigate to your job, it sends an automated text to the client. Yeah, people, the amount of people who have spoken to me and said, "Wow, like you told you told me you were twenty seven minutes away, and yeah. you rocked up at twenty seven minutes." Yeah. they they really like it. It yeah. looks makes us look professional, yeah, sure. and it's definitely yeah. worth every every cent. I reckon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. And do you, do you promote yourself? I mean, how do you get your generate your leads? <laughs> Um, well, I haven't promoted at all. Um, I've been lucky, obviously, with the Dakin background, a lot of work has seemed to f- find me. I obviously did a lot of groundwork initially. So when I decided that I wanted to do it, I actually went around and spoke to a lot of dealers around the Dakin network and let them know of my intentions. And um, I was lucky enough to obtain work there and, some, and also had a bit of a guarantee in place with a company. Um, basically, they said, look, we we're more than happy to give you work. And if it doesn't work out you can come work with us so that was a bit of a safety net so that's what really pushed me over into doing it yeah um yeah so basically i went around did the groundwork first and i started in january and it was a really hot summer and we've just kind of never looked back mm-hmm. um and it's been really good but yeah i haven't advertised um at all um i've never been massive on it but it's definitely important to have some form of a presence so we've got the facebook i think we've got a website that's currently getting made and we've got signage which i never said i would do we've got signage on we've got my van is wrapped in signage but it's more so about just having a presence out there and being seen yeah um but yeah uh, haven't really advertised but yeah and i was never massive onto it because i just want our work to speak for itself but it's more so about that now. I understand it's more so about having a presence and being mm. seen. Mm. Mm. Just on the, you mentioned um, uh, wrapping your van. For those that haven't had a vehicle wrapped, what sort of, like, if you don't mind me asking, what sort of dollars are you talking to have that, uh, like, a vehicle signed like that? Yeah, so it really depends on, I suppose, what you're after. Um, and I, my thoughts were, well, if I'm going to do it, I'm, I've never, I've always liked 
not having vehicles wrapped or anything like that. Uh, I thought, well, if I'm going to do it, I want it to look. I really want to love how it looks. Mm-hmm. So I spent a fair bit of time researching around. Actually, saw a couple of guys um, in a company called Sign Lab in Adelaide. Uh, I really liked their work. Mm-hmm. And then, ironically, one of the guys I play football with, he works there. So just he's oh, like, oh, right. I work there. He's like, no worries, come down, have a look. And they, did, right. they did a design for me. <laughs> I wish it was mate, right? Yeah. But he did a design for me and I really liked it. But yeah, look, it really depends. So I think I've got a three-quarter wrap. So it's pretty much just the front that's not done. Um, and that was around three and a half. Yeah, so right. pretty, yeah. it's pretty dear. It really depends. And look, I've had this conversation with another contractor when he got his van wrapped and I was looking into my said, oh, have you ever had anyone ring you and say, oh, you know, I've got your number off the you know, side, you know, seeing yeah. your van. He's like, not one. But it's yeah. more so about yeah. having a presence, I think. I think so. And being seen. It's, it's, a, it's a home or billboard, I definitely yeah. had... Um, I had people say that to oh, me yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah. No, you yeah. cut. No, you cut me off. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you, you get the odd person going. You know, you, yeah, you cut me off. And but yeah. often, if it's, um, I want to speak to your boss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> often, if, if you're driving the same route every day, then you're going to have this, generally the same cars going the same direction, the same time, aren't they? Yeah. So whether you actually consciously uh, are aware of it or not, subliminally, is that the word? Can't even say it. Had a beer. Well, um, don't ask me. Um, the message, the message is there because it's more of a consistent message that's there. That whether you're actually actively thinking about it or not. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, I think it's um, yeah, what we're thinking about. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, as well. Yeah, I've had a lot of people say, oh, "I've seen you driving," and I've even had people like, "You I see, I see." You. So I've had people say, yeah. "I see your vans everywhere." Yeah, that's and it's right. Just, and it's, just, and it's just me. That's that's so that, that's yeah. just the fact, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, we do get around. When I say we, it's just me. But yeah. I also like to refer to it as an entity um, because it is my wife. She does heaps of the heavy lifting with the work, so yeah. um, I've definitely got to. I definitely include her in it because. Yeah, um, definitely. And any plans to expand? It definitely crosses my mind every single day, especially when we're, um, especially those long stressful days and um, definitely crosses my mind. It's just a decision that I'd never wanted to rush. Um, being said as well, and it's not like any, uh, that I think, you know, like I know so much or anything like that, but it's more so the fact that I have to employ someone, I actually have to teach them um, a lot about the data and stuff, even if they're a fully qualified tech. Um, the work that we do, do is quite specialised in some instances, so I'd have to actually give them, teach them the experience that I've gained from Dakin, mm-hmm. so then they can go in and get the same result. Because yeah. if I, if, you know, if we're having a changeover and I'm going there, like a change of a job, and I'm going there, and if I can spend thirty minutes and save the customer money, and then I send my other technician, and then he's there for hours, and he ends up ringing me anyway. Yeah, it, it really needs. We need to be on the same page. Yeah. So that's probably the first thing. I suppose with the whole COVID-19, I was a bit unsure what was going to happen. So mm. I've definitely crossed my mind. I've uh, got a really good friend of mine who uh, works for a company and we've spoken about it a lot. Um, but I've just been a little bit scared to move on it. Kind of like what I was when I wanted to start the business. It's like kind of like the same leap yeah. of, you know, but now I've got to make sure he's busy and, you know, like yeah. I'm, I'm taking care of, you know, him essentially and I've got to make sure he has yeah. a job. So that's another stress in itself but I definitely want to do it um, I definitely want to grow it just I want to make sure it's you know it's right it's, time. it's, the, it's right yeah. yeah so do you think that getting the, getting the work first before employing someone or do you and then or are you having too much work to cope with by yourself yeah or do you so this is the problem I have yeah. to we definitely have too much to the point that I'm str- now struggling and yeah. um, mm. I actually work really closely with another ex Dakin employee who works in his own business and he's been going for almost a year now so um and we do lots of work together so the bigger jobs we team up he's electrician and uh refrigeration mechanic by trade but he's not a cert two he's a fully qualified fridgey so dual trade dual trade an actual dual trade yep so um yeah he's really good on jobs and his experience he's really good at what he does so we do a lot together and we're both sort of looking back going oh god like what's coming for summer we're both really nervous um and that's where I start thinking about employees, but I would just hate to ever have to, you know, especially in those quieter periods, and want to keep them busy. Um, but yeah, it is supremely stressful, um, you know, when you're flat out and just everything keeps yeah. coming and keeps coming. But I do enjoy it. So, so yeah, but so you, yeah, you do like being a frigid. 
Yeah, absolutely. Definitely enjoy it. And I'm, it's crazy. I never thought I, if you look back as a young kid and said, oh, you know, air conditioning. Like, <laughs> but I do enjoy it. It's not it. a sexy industry. No, nah, nah, definitely not. When I say people, I'm a fridge. I used to say people, I'm a fridge. Like, oh, do you fix people's fridges at home? And I was like, oh, no, you just replace them. You don't fix them. <laughs> but yeah. Well, well, you know what? Well, uh, we are just about out of time, and we could yeah. easily keep going. We could go for a long time, yeah. We but, could go, um, but uh, you know what we're going to do now, though, Brad? I think um, it might be time. It might be that time. <laughs> we'd better prepare and uh, crack a beer, and we'll get into it. We'll grab a beer, and we'll get to the next round. That's exactly all right. That's better. Alrighty, here we go. So here's the, we've got a beer. Hmm. We're back on track, guys. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to that. All Cheers right. to that. Good drink. Mm. Now, for hey, those playing at home, and for you, Shane, this segment is called Keeping It Cool in the Hot Seat. Now, this is where we ask you a, a, a series of questions, so your shortest one-word answer would be appreciated, if possible. All right. <laughs> Alrighty, go for it. So we're it. going to hit the clock, Brad. You can press that button. Press that button. Bang. There you go. And we're away. Shane, if you were to write an autobiography, what would the title be? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man, I don't know how to answer that. So I can't answer that. What day can experience? <laughs> oh god. Uh, I love that. All right, move on. Yeah, let's if, go next if question. If you could be a superhero, who would you be? Oh, it's got to be Thor, doesn't it? Yeah. Your Thor? Thor. Yeah. Not for Thor I can't pit. It's got to be Thor. Thor for sure, I reckon. Thor for sure. Thor. Yeah, got to be. I am Thor. You just fly up everywhere. And everything. Yeah, oh, I'll go nice. for Thor. Um, if, if a song described your work ethic, Shane, what song would it be? Thousand Miles, have you heard that song? Ah, uh, making my yeah. way downtown. Yeah. Oh, I think it's the Proclaimers. Just, you know that one? No. no. Uh, Here you go. Have you seen uh, what's that movie? White Chicks. Ah, oh, uh, right. Okay. Uh, the younger, younger generation. Yeah, yeah. That's anyway. What are you trying to say? Oh, no, no. Um, if you're a, if you're a brand, what would your motto be? Mm, stay cool. Nice. If you could sit with one celebrity or famous person for a chat, who would that person be? Easy, Kobe Bryant. <clears throat> oh, nice, okay, good. Uh, when you go on a holiday, what's the first thing you pack? Depends where I'm going. <laughs> mm. Depends where I'm going. Yep. If I'm going somewhere exotic, not, not packing very much. Like if I'm going to Bali, not taking very much. Pair of thongs? Literally. Yeah, <laughs> you can get everything you need over there yeah, for right, 10 yeah. bucks and you're away for the week. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, cool. If Hollywood made a movie about your life, who would you like to play the lead role? Ooh. Oh, jeez. These are interesting questions. That'd have to be a pretty good looking rooster though, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's got to be... <laughs> got to be... Ooh, I don't know. I'm going to go with Paul Walker, even though he's deceased. Oh, yeah. But Paul Walker, because same last name. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say. Same last name, you look a bit like him. <laughs> <laughs> if you could choose one meal for the rest of your life, what would that meal be? Oh, it's got to be pizza. Nice. Got to be. Using a scale of one to ten, rate yourself on your weirdness. Oh, it depends on the, depends on the moment. But depends I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to go probably around a seven. Okay. Up there. Up yeah, there for enough. sure. If you could be the um, Prime Minister, what's the first thing you would change? Oh, the cert too? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually make, do you know what I would actually do as much, so it's either, for me it's either one thing or the other. Alcohol, drink and drive it. Okay, just cut it, either cut it completely or don't do it. Don't entice it. It's such a grey area. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, give you, like, it's like luring you in because one person can have a beer and be over. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Anyway. These are one word answers. Sorry, another, yeah, another day. Another day. Yeah. <laughs> Describe yourself. Different three... podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting caught up. Describe, <laughs> Describe yourself in three words. Ooh. Nah. Nah. Oh, I don't know what the right word is, but I'm... Courageous. Yeah, I would just go with, uh, I don't know, I've never I'm all, never let things go, I can't let things go. So I'll just keep going and going and going until I get a result. So you're like a terrier. Just, yeah, I won't let it go. Yeah, we'll go with that. Yep. Alright, if you had a time machine, what's the first pl- where's the first place you'd go? Mm. Jesus. 
I'd be hopeless at these questions. Yeah, they're bloody <laughs> hard questions. It's like a million word answers here. <laughs> One word answer. Um, oh, jeez. Oh, I don't know. Nah, no answer. Pass. Skip. Pass. Name one thing everyone looks weird doing. Oh. Jesus. Ah, oh, I gotta come think of this. Everyone looks weird wearing masks. That's for sure. That's true. Yeah, That's very, very topical. It's very weird. Have you ever yeah. had a sick day when you weren't really sick? <laughs> yes. That's, That's silly. Sick. Especially when I was younger. No when we talked about. Well. When we talked about when I was younger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, What's your favourite swear word? Is it Jesus? Nah, no, <laughs> I'm not, I can't, I can't say this stuff on here. Oh, okay. good. No one's listening. It's right. Depends what day it is and yeah. what's going on. It's yeah. a lot of swear words. All there. right. Um, if a taxi and a limo were priced the same and sitting in front of you, which one would you get into? Taxi. Taxi, what? Absolutely. That? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care how it looks. It's about yeah. getting and there. And Shane yeah. Walker from Walker Air, your final question is, what is your porn star name? Oh. Hmm. If you're stuck. The sparkler. Oh, the sparkler. Yeah. The sparkler. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Sparkles, eh? Yeah. Mr. Sparkles. 20 seconds in and out. Done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sparkler. Oh, I didn't, use a while to pick up on it. I did not the see that coming. The sparkler. <laughs> but apparently you did. Uh, yeah. I thought I saw a twinkle in your eyes. Uh, <laughs> Ah, oh, there you go. So that's the end of the quiz, mate. You've done very well there. You've wrapped it up beautifully and uh, awesome. shocked us at every angle. So, yeah, exactly. um, Mark, Brad and I'd like to say thanks for coming in today. We appreciate you pleasure, coming mate. in, having no a worries. beer with us and, and uh, talking about your story, which is all very, very interesting. So yeah. um, we're going we're gonna to pressure you for to nominate someone else to come on at some point. So uh, Oh, yeah, I can get somebody. Yeah, you can oh, get somebody in someone in here, yeah. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Well, look, mate, if anyone wants to get in touch with Walker Air, how do they get in touch with you? Oh, so we've got, it's, we're not landlines, we're mobile numbers, unfortunately. Um, we don't have a landline, but that would be the best person to contact. Um, often when people contact me during business hours, you're going to get an automated text, which will send you to the service coordinator, which is Kristen. Um, and her number is, I think it's 0434-489-228, and she will... Uh, do her best to hear your problems and book you in as soon as possible. Nice. Um, we also have a Facebook which we do operate. We don't tend to do too much on it. We also have an Instagram as well, so you can reach us on either of those. And we do have a website that's currently getting built, which is www.walkeraircontrol.com.au. Beautiful. Sounds well done. Good. Well done. All right. Well, uh, again, thanks, mate, for coming on. We appreciate it. No worries. And Brad, uh, we've had a hell of a week. Oh, it's and Friday it's, afternoon. It's Friday it's afternoon. And and time to go home. Oh my God, and this beer is just going down an absolute treat. Oh, I'm going to be a pleasure to be around when I get home. For <laughs> <laughs> 20 seconds. I can, already, I can already tell. I can already tell. You'll be like 11 teen reds in by the time it's uh, 7 o'clock. So. Sit down and watch the footy. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That sounds, sounds like good. a plan. All right. Well, look, guys, thanks again for stopping by and listening to us carry on. And uh, if you want to get in touch with us, and, and don't forget, I'm going to throw it out there again, the reviews, guys. The reviews are really important yeah. for us to uh, to get discovered. So if you can Hit jump on it, it's not actually a hard process. You just jump on iTunes, and if you, you'll see there, it says rating and reviews, I think. Click on that. Do the old swipe with the uh, stars and leave a bit of a comment too. And we'd love to give you guys a shout on air. So yeah, yeah. if you know anyone that you can nominate to come on, dob them in. Dob them in. We'll we'll we'll, we'll attack them. Send us a sneaky email. Yeah. I don't even have to know. It's like airconditioningpodcast.com and there's a contact form on there or airconditioningpodcast at gmail.com is the other one you can get in touch with us. Yeah. So. <clears throat> but until the next episode, Brad. Adios. Adios and good night. Hey, Rui. <laughs> That's all for this episode of the Air Conditioning Podcast. Be sure to stop by at airconditioningpodcast.com to connect with us, as well as on Facebook and Twitter, and join in the conversation. Until next time, stay tuned, stay positive, and stay cool.